How's it going everyone? I have some Mustang updates documented in video format to share with you today. So recently I decided to dress up my engine bay a little. My main idea was to get the engine covers airbrushed with the stars and stripes. So while they were off being painted I ordered in some other bits to improve the look of some of the standard components under the bonnet. First on the list was a nice alloy header tank to replace that ugly plastic unit that comes from the factory. This was something I knew I wanted to replace right from day one since it's the first thing you see right at the front of the engine bay and it just looks cheap and nasty. I opted for the black Mishimoto expansion tank in my order of bits from American Muscle in the US. Fitting is a fairly simple task, it's just a case of loosening all the hose clamps and popping them off, then undoing the two bolts that secure the tank in place. The hardest part is trying to empty the contents of the tank into a jug so you can reuse it without spilling it all over the place. There was one moment where I carefully positioned one of the hoses vertically, waited a second to ensure it wasn't going to move, but then as soon as I stepped away it decided to flop down and gush out coolant all over the under tray. So I had a tiny bit of topping up to do once I transferred all the hoses over to the much nicer looking Mushimoto tank and filled it back up. Next up on my jobs list was to install a Roush cold air intake. I primarily bought this just for the looks under the hood with that big fat air filter replacing the standard air box, but this does come with a little insert that can be removed which after a tune can provide you some decent HP gains. The installation for this would be a breeze if it wasn't for that silly sound tube, the 10mm nut that secures it onto the firewall in particular. Checking up the car and getting to it from below is the easiest method despite being a lot of work just for this one tiny nut. Once you're under there you can reach right up and use a ratchet spanner a quarter turn at a time and suffer the hand cramps as you slowly unwind the nut along the obnoxiously long thread. My car was still slightly warm from turning it around on the driveway. The logical thing to do would be to wait until the car cooled down, but no, instead I persevered and played a game of operation as I carefully fed my arm up and passed the headers, trying not to get scalded. Once the sound tube is unvaulted and unclipped it can be pulled out like Steve Irwin wrestling a snake. The most venomous snake in the world. The rest of the intake comes out easily above the car. A few hoses are unclipped, followed by a couple of Jubilee clips. The whole lot can then be manoeuvred out in one piece. The airbox leaves a nice hole to access the deeper parts of the engine bay, so it's a good opportunity to give it all a quick clean. Most of the work is actually done on the workbench, swapping bits and bobs from the standard intake over to the replacement Roush parts, such as the three rubber grommets and the air sensor constructing the Roush airbox by connecting the various plastic pieces together. The new airbox then slots back in in the same way the old one came out, you just need to unclip a wiring harness for it to reach all the way around to the new MAF sensor location. The main tub fits in first, then the air filter is slotted onto the tube and put in place, followed by the bendy tube that connects onto the throttle body, which is held in place by Jubilee clips. The most important step then is to add the Roush sticker to finish it all off. Now, I wasn't actually expecting anything performance wise, especially since I'm running mine with the insert in place so it doesn't require a tune, but I did actually notice the car pulls a little bit better around the 3000 RPM mark. With the bonnet open you can hear that nice sucking sound through the intake, but on the move any audible improvement from the induction is overpowered by the exhaust on my car. With those two aftermarket upgrades in place it was then time to install my freshly painted engine covers. I'd come up with the idea of having them painted with the American flag, with stars on one side and stripes on the other, split over the plenum cover, then continuing down onto each coil cover. I found Kev at Nimbus Airbrush Art via a local search on Facebook, explained what I wanted and then left the covers with him while I went away on holiday. When he showed me the preview pics they were exactly what I'd imagined and more. The rippling of the flag fabric looks really cool and all the paints are metallic so they shimmer and shine in the sunlight. I'm really happy with the overall look, especially with the star spangled banner. It is slightly cheesy but it's hidden away under the hood most of the time, only to be unveiled at shows and meets where it's most appreciated. So that wraps up another upgrade video. Next up will probably be a quick installation of my BMR Cradle Lockout Kit before heading to the drag strip in June, so keep an eye out for that. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.